Hi everyone, I'm Mary, and today we're going to be looking at something I've been asked to do for quite a while now. This is going to be Text Talks Battletech. I probably just butchered that day because there's enough concepts in there that I'm like, you know what? I know me. I'm going to fuck this up because I can't say names to save my life. It, it's a problem. It, it is really a problem. I need to work on that. Otherwise, I'm just going to jump right in because this is a Battletech franchise. And normally I would say it's a Battletech series that's handmade, which it is. But apparently it was adapted into the actual canon lore of Battletech. Which would mean more to me if I knew more about Battletech than it was a game in the 90s that I couldn't play because I still didn't memorize where the WASD buttons were. <sighs> yeah. As you can see, <laughs> I haven't gotten any better since then. Yeah. We're just going to jump right and see how this goes because I've heard a lot of good things about this and people in a lot of comments on a lot of different platforms have been very, very oh dear god levels of insistent that i do this so i'm really excited so i'm just going to jump in and see where this goes again there's a link below to the original videos make sure to hit them up when you're done don't forget to leave a like comment subscribe now let's get started okay so far i'm just looking at this and going this definitely feels like 80s mech like pre-evangelion would become super slimmed down it just looks big and bulky and probably something we can actually realistically redo right now and i think if that japan verse America robot fight happened. It did kind of look like that. Sorry, I'm actually a hard time remembering that fight because it's not like we lost her or anything. I'm definitely not repressing that part. Why is there a TV on its shoulder? Hi there, folks. Text of the Black Pants Legion here. This is a new idea I'm trying. Oh. Right? We'll talk about one of the universes I truly love. Are you liking it? Having grown up with Battletech and been a mech nerd for such a long time, I figured this series is, well, overdue. And also might prove interesting, at least to a few, where I can talk lore, see bills, and glory in the Battletech universe. Oh. So to start this series off, let's begin appropriately with my favorite mech, the Awesome. Specifically... I'm sorry, is is there actually a mech called Awesome? I know it's in the title, but it's like, it's not as A-W-S-8-6. Sorry, that's a Q. Wow. Uh, I'm having a Gura moment right there. Yep, just drink caffeine and definitely pretend I didn't just go full Gura. On the upside, I still remembered 1 plus 1 doesn't equal 42. Although it probably should, because 42 is awesome. I, I just... It, it's actually pronounced awesome. Aus? A? Q? How do you get awesome out of like, Maybe just A, W, S, whatever. Still, though, I... There's something I really love about hearing people say, I'm just going to talk about my favorite thing. Something about that phrase automatically says, I'm going to like this. Do I know anything about this universe? No. Do I care? Honestly, other than a lot of recommendations, I know nothing about this. I don't know enough to care or not care. But just hearing someone is like, yeah, I love this. This is great. We're going to do this. Like, even though he's doing that voice of, yeah, I just got that deep gravelly voice that I'm definitely not making Arier jealous with because he can't pull it off if he tries as hard as what he's doing right now. He's trying to stretch out this bit just to see if he can do it. And he can't. It's actually somewhat enraging. Mm. I'm not jealous of his voice. I'm not jealous of his voice. I'm, I'm, okay, I'm very jealous of the voice. I can't do that to save my life. <laughs> it's just really cool to hear someone with that much passion just do something they love. The fact that it seems like it did pretty well. Noise. The AWS 8Q. Awesome. The Awesome was first designed by Technicron Manufacturing in Merrick Space. That'd be the free world's league for the rest of you. Or those weird right. Austro-Hungarian space nobility guys, for the few who identify with that. Starting production in 2665, because there's a lot the of awesome was lore I don't know originally yet. to replace the Striker, which is one of those classic Star League eras. I know this is probably going to offend a lot of people what I'm about to say, but... With how this mech looks, it's so much more rounded than the one we just looked at. It has, like, the webbed feet. It looks like it's wearing a diaper. Like, it, it's that bulbous section right in the middle. I'm sorry. I know it's going to sound bad, and I know I'm going to piss people off, but it looks like the baby mech. It's super rounded and chubby and cute as little face. It, that it just has this... It's the highlighted, or sorry, raised section right here. So it almost looks like the torso section is dropped in a bit, 
which it is because of how it's moving. And it's actually a very realistic build. You could probably do this right now. It's bulky enough where it'd have really good stability here. So it would probably be a functional mech in human history at this point in time. But it just looks like it's wearing a diaper. And so help me, if you painted that section white and nothing else, I, I don't even... We're getting a level of fetish here that I don't feel comfortable with. Like, I can deal with a lot. That's not... that. No. No. Salt mechs that have been around for a while. Ah, uh, yes, the has diaper long mech. long since faded into obscurity. In no small part, thanks to the secession wars. They got dumped on. Hell, by the loss of their Storm Vanger lines in the mid-2800s, there were fewer than 300 strikers in the entire Damn. inner sphere. I need to figure out what the awesome sphere is. The Awesome did more than replace the striker. Ooh. It became legend. The Awesome is such a feared battle mech. Oh. A common saying oh. in the inner sphere is the only defense against an Awesome is another Awesome. Then again, that may be a corporate tagline to... Oh, I'm sorry. This is... It's like for as much as the last one looked like it was just a mech with a diaper. This one... Oh, this is a thing of beauty. It's like just the sketch of it. The schematic look right here in the blue screen. Or I guess the blue lines, which is actually something old architects did because that's actually the line format they use. They don't do it anymore, but it's still called a blueprint because of that reason. Because of that entire sketch, it's like, okay, that's kind of cool. But then just seeing this i'm just going back up a sec like oh like the giant shoulder arms the huge cannon that's just massive support and overbuilt and super detail oh um you know i suddenly understand why people like these just massively overdesigned mechs it's just the entire idea of i am thick i am durable i'm not gonna move fast and i don't need to because fuck all y'all with this giant laser cannon specifically it's so damn cool. I think I just became a Mech Warrior fan. Awesome. Oh, then again, God. that may be I mean, look a at it. Just... tagline to sell awesomes, which they did to virtually everyone. It's actually a really good tagline. So why so popular? The list of look at it. Look at that thing. Look at that. Ugh, guy, that every face. mercenary lord and inner sphere It just looks durable. Alike. Concentrating principally on an energy-based weapons platform with 28 heat sinks to keep things relatively Ooh. cool, Smart. the Awesome can maul anything that walks and be the last mech standing every time. None of the technical It's like the stuff. Dreadnought from 40K, but As super sized and awesome, super durable. Or at least the principal model of the AWS-8Q no is mean. an energy-based weapons system. The AWS-8Q has three PPCs. And what? a small laser. Battle fist is a laser. In addition, spinny it's doodad. A battle fist at the end of its left arm. <laughs> oh, wow. Meaning it is quite capable of pummeling an enemy even if everything else is broken. Honestly, yeah, just with the spinning motion alone. Keeping it's, the it's sheer amount enough, of goddamn armor effective. on it. And Awesome is an impressively armored Ooh. mech. Carrying 15 tons of armor, which oh. makes it one of the most oh, heavily the armed 80 ton assault mechs in the universe. In fact, it has some of the heaviest rear armor of any known rear battle armor. mech, even by later era standards. Mm. Meaning that often enough, it will, as I've said, be the last mech standing. Wait. Mechs don't defend their rear? I was assuming they're not very mobile, so it seems like that would be a good idea. I. This is just one of those weird things where it's like, in universe it makes sense, but out of universe it's like, I don't move fast, but if I'm flanked, which could be very easily, I'm fucked. Yeah, I'm just going to ignore that because just look at this image. Look at that. You can see the cockpit actually immolating inside, but the armor is actually holding together. But there's so many explosions being contained because even though it's failing, the armor is still doing its job just from the wrong direction. It's so freaking beautiful. It's like seconds before it explodes here. I love this. It's so freaking cool. Oh, God, I'm enjoying this video more than I thought I would. I, I realize having phrased that is probably going to haunt me in the comments. Maybe future me will remember to edit this out. Probably not. In any engagement. It's kept cool with 28 single heat sinks in the Pit Band 240 standard engine. Helps it lumber they, around in a sinks? reasonable assault mech like, speed what do they sink the heat of 54 kph. Should be noted that the Garrett T19G communication system what? is the same used by the ancient and venerable ANH-2A annihilator. 
a mech that would shock the Inner Sphere when introduced, or rather reintroduced, by the Wolves Dragoons in 3000. Whoa. Sorry, just... I love this entire design, but it's so unique. Also, I, I need to start finding lore videos to understand what he's saying. Be like, this is an old design that was reintroduced, so it's actually really functional still, so it's still really damn good. But I just... The dual cockpit system right here, like right here, you can see this is the most armored section. If the cockpit isn't actually there, I don't know what is. But then you see an actual, honest to God, bridge up here. So I'm thinking, how massive is this thing that the opening section here isn't just a camera, but an actual bridge? I don't know, and I love this. I, I just love humanoid robots in general. This is so cool. This is like Megas XLR fuel, and I'm not just thinking that because it has somewhat the right colors right here. Perfect time to find out if that's actually coming back, but mm, it's like the scorpion tail head is so cool. It has like little eyes down here. <laughs> I know they're actually probably guns, but actually, are they lights? Because they have them here too underneath the, or above the barrel. It's so freaking cool. That was a nine. There are many interesting awesome variants, variants of the awesome some of which serve as useful LRM platforms where others incorporate what? lost tech in the form of XL engines or ERP PCs. I have no idea what any of those words are. Heat sinks. Manufactured and sold through three consortiums over its history, Technicron, Irian Battlemax Unlimited, and Lycom Davion Introtech, the awesome is a I readily to available find out the lore and surprisingly want to now. for any mercenary unit or house guard. Comparatively, the AWS 8Q costs a modest 6.5 million C-bills. Whereas the similar 80-ton mech like the Victor and Thug are well over 8 million. Okay, one. The Victor. It looks like they were going for a samurai look there, but it... No. And the Thug! It's functional, but it looks like they wanted to have hands and guns and couldn't decide which one they went for. Yeah. Also, the rear-facing leg joint. That's interesting. You don't really see that a lot in most designs of anything. I don't just mean for mechs. I, I mean for, like, literally any form of media. Rear-facing legs, unless you're talking specifically about centaur-style legs of an animal-based contraption, or even animals, you don't really see rear-facing ever. So it's interesting they even included that. Huh. But I just, I'm sorry, the numbers there. Six million. It sounds like a lot that easy. Eight million. For some honestly less impressive looking ones. Granted, these are again are just the sketches, so it's hard to say when well, this is so freaking beautiful, man. Oh, geez. It's, this is just the, uh, this is the pinups of death video all over again. Now I know what some of you are thinking, and by some of you, I mean clan or scum. Who? Yes, you can feel the 75-ton Mad Cat, or as you call it, a Timberwolf, which is a more versatile weapon system by far than an awesome. Until you look at the cost, 75 tons of Mad Cat is 24 million C-bills. Oh, but Tex, I play tabletop and I don't use C-bills. I go by battle value, you say. Okay, a Mad Cat ranges between 2252 battle value points and 27... 37 battle value points and awesome ranges between 1358 and 1605. Now, I'm not a mech warrior, battle tech, whatever player, but that is a significant value decrease for something that he says is on par. Like, not even slightly. That That is... That's literally a thousand off plus... I don't know how big these games get, but just that right there means you would have a significant advantage. I know nothing about this game, but sheer point-wise, if he is saying that it's only a little more versatile, but this thing is just durable as hell, being more durable but also cheaper is such a great combo in any game that I don't need to know anything about Biotech to realize that that's impressive. Would it hold up? I don't know, but... Ah... 
Oh, so I find I, I need to figure out where to get these models. People keep giving me links. It's like, oh, they're not loading. Why are they not loading? I don't know this happened. I, I, and maybe I lose some of the good ones. I, I need to go back and find more. I need to find more. I want more of this. Oh, dear God. I Freaking giant robots, man. That is, unless you play tonnage versus tonnage. In which case, shame on you. Shame. People play tonnage? Anyway, oh, I, guess I it's, hope you enjoyed. Yeah. And if you have anything else you want me to cover, in one of these... Don't sue Tex. Tex has no sea bills. This is a work of opinion from an asshole. You have been warped. Everything belongs to respective owners, writers, artists, and so on. Tex is just a voice that likes whiskey. How does a voice drink whiskey? Probably the same way they smell color. Those monsters. Also, I'm pretty sure this is the board in the background. So it's like, oh yeah, light cover, water, depth of one, depth of two. It's like, oh, that's really cool. It gives you all the board with such an easy to produce section. I mean, I would love the more built-up boards myself just because I like how they look. But this is cool just to see it and you know, play around with it. Ah. And next up, we have the Text Talks Battletech, the Atlas, which I'm assuming is that domed, shelled mech that was in the thumbnail. Because I, I don't know here. I, I need to figure out what it is. Like, what are the consortiums? What are the inner sphere? What are the outer I guess there's an outer sphere. I don't know. If, if anyone knows a specifically good place to find out, I would appreciate links because I really want to know more. I mean, what really sold me was just the art. Originally, it was just like the passion he had. Like, I love this. This is cool. And then he pulled up art that was so freaking cool, man. It's like the first time you ever see a mecha in any form of anime. Usually you don't see it anywhere else. So I'm just going to say anime. And it's like, oh, this thing's big. Yeah. Oh, it's like the first time you saw Big O or Evangelion or even Gundam. And it's just, it's that level of, oh, I love this. It's that little kid feeling. And I'm getting it right now. And just for that alone, I love it. The art he's chosen is amazing. This bits of lore he's dropping are like, yeah, that's cool. And the only way to beat an awesome is another awesome. That's just a cool bit of actually good marketing that... I'm kind of surprised other people haven't used in completely non-related medium, like legitimately using that as something to sell things in reality right now. Why are we not seeing that? That's actually a good tag. That just makes sense. So I'm just going to jump right in. I don't know how many of these are going to watch today. I'm, just, I, I just, I'm loving this. It's so cool. <laughs> oh, my geek card is flying high today. I know that's supposed to be a flag, but honestly... I didn't have the actual money for a flag, so I had to get a card instead. Yeah, and I've been losing so many of them lately. <laughs> Whoa! Okay, this look nipple lasers. I don't like the part. Oh, so I remember hearing that phrase, enemy mech destroyed. Of the I never got it. Legion, and it's time to talk battle tech. That In looks this brutal. Series, I will be exploring battle tech as a setting. Talking about the lore. This one seems the smaller wars, because the trees in the background. The people, and most important, the nipple lasers, the max. Oh, that too. In the setting of BattleTech, sooner wow. or later. That looks almost like a suit of armor. to see an atlas. Probably because it's the very definition of an assault mag. Right. It's big. It's scary. Yeah. It even has a fucking spooky skull face. <laughs> okay, so that's intentional. I mean, what's not to love? At a hundred tons even, and spouting enough armor and weaponry. Oh, it's big! Push most mechs head on or underfoot. The Atlas is an iconic representation of the assault mech class. Ooh, okay, so because of the trees in the background, I thought that was almost going to be a suit of armor sized mech, maybe slightly bigger than human average. But no, this is full on giant robot. But it has hands. There's three fingers, though, which is weird, but okay. Also, the bulbous head is just kind of out there and weird. But then they paint it up to look like a skull, so it's kind of terrifying. That, that's, that's just really cool. Intimidating, bold, and angry. Bold? Oh, this is an old Yeah, this was originally designed under specifications from none other than Alexander Kerensky himself. What? In 2755. Probably in a bid to ensure that the Star League Defense Force maintained absolute military superiority over I feel like I should know these names, but I don't. Member states. Perhaps Kerensky saw the future coming. Dude. Like, just, just back up a second and look at this image. I, this is, this is like 70s, 80s sci-fi 
shake all over the place. God, it's like the gun hands that just hold nothing, but they're like guns and they're shooting a gun, but it's not actually their hands, so it's just there. But then you have the classic, like whenever you think of anything to do with giant robots, it's this look. There's just the legs, the spindly arms, the big ass guns, the rockets on the back. Like this is what I think of when I think of Battletech. But then this thing is just like big and sturdy and it's there. It's like, oh yeah, I'm going to look more human than you, so I'm way more durable. I just love this. You see it walking in the background, just running-ish. It looks like it's maybe semi-running walking. Then this guy's actually dodging with the feet. I just... Mm. Oh, God, this is so cool. And the explosion, the rockets, and the more explosions, and lasers. And I just, I'm sorry. I'm in my happy place right now. <laughs> Saw the future coming with the constant arms. Oh, there's even little the helicopters in the top. Easting. It's Love this art. And thus wanted to guarantee that any rebellious notions were quashed upon seeing the full might of the SLDF. So it's made to look Grinsky's scary for intimidation purposes. Are somewhat poetic, though in Yo mama. As the man was himself. Kerensky was directly quoted to say that he wanted a mech as powerful as possible, as impenetrable as possible and it's ugly and foreboding as conceivable so that fear itself will be our ally. It kind of works. Perhaps not the words to share with the general public. However, it's <laughs> just the right choice of words for dedicated engineers mm. who turn the mighty forges of war from the Ameris Civil War wow. to Operation Exodus, Oh, it's punching into something. Succession Wars, the clan invasion... And the Fedcom Civil War from Solaris 7 to the Battle of Luthien, the Atlas has stood its ground and pounded flat all opposition. It's literally punching it. By Defiance Industries, Independent Weaponry, God, that guy's head is huge. Battle Works, and Yori Mech Works. There is no shortage of the Atlas. Merely enough for whatever the hell you need one for. If oh, its head plugs in. That is. Oh. Sometimes the Atlas is just the perfect weapon system for the is job. Is that a ferret that in the command section there? Steam rolling a planet's defenses flat, comfortably seated in the confines of your Death's Head cockpit. That's quite reasonable for 9.6 million sea bills on the open market. Now to the technical details. For comparison, the previous one was significantly cheaper. It's weird, though, how you're actually supposed to be sitting in the head itself. So I guess since it attaches, does it just come on to protect you? Or are you actually literally dropped in via Ava plug, essentially, but it's the headpiece? Huh. I don't know. Also, I love this art of it right here. Like, just the sheer detail. Like, one of the things I'm always trying to love about all of this Battletech is just how bulky everything is and... It's a thing of beauty to see all of the arms fire pocking. Like, things are being torn out. There's pieces of the arms missing and falling out. This thing is almost gouged to pieces. The gun is slag. Shoulders are gone. But, like, the important sections, the gun, the underslung gun, which does look like a gun holster. It has a gun attached to it. You just fire straight from the holster. Cool little effect there. It just, it's so cool. And all the extra parts are just... It just mm. I love this. This is so cool. Because of the widespread production of the Atlas and the sheer longevity and popularity of its design. I mean, if you got something durable, that's the important part. to say with any certainty what a standard Atlas Look at that! Is, as oh. almost everyone is a unique individual as its pilot. Oh? Ooh, it's customizable. Oftentimes an Atlas will be handed down as they have a tendency to outlive their commanders. Each in turn, adding to, modifying, or fine-tuning the death machine for yet another generation of classy, so beat up, it still stumpy stands. robot mayhem. The standard Atlas, also see compared to the buildings in the background. Thing, cool. The a mech built around commonly available How old are they usually then? Technologies to ensure relatively common availability of spare parts, upgrades, and ammunition. The AS-70 has 19 tons of 
Duralex heavy special armor. I'm assuming that's good. Single stack heat sinks. Ooh. A Defiance Mech Hunter AC. Oh, the Underslung cannon, cannon, yeah. Four Defiance B3 and medium lasers. Ah. Thunderstroke SRM6. Ah, oh, but where are the nipple lasers far from the intro? Maxi rack LRM20. That's the far fire no maxi rack. Keep it running for they have maxi pad bras. Carnage. Of course they do. Yeah, this is built around combat survival. I don't even think that's how that works. At its core, keeping like in mind a mustache. the philosophy of redundancy, the Atlas's weapon systems are bracketed for all ranges, assuming oh. you will want to close with and stomp your opponent. Oh. That is, after showing them their weapons are useless against you. We LRMs tried tying it up. Long range, medium lasers for intermediate range. The SRMs and auto cannon for short range, and mighty battle fists for mech warrior fisty cuffs. Yeah. If anything runs out of ammunition. Punch there are it. Energy based systems. If nothing else works. Okay, that that I love that. If you're close enough to read this, it's a tactical error. That's such a brag, and I love that they just included that. So especially because it's a picture of it punching. Almost looks like a rocket fist coming out, but that's that's stupid. No one actually does that. I hope no one actually does that. Which is like. Is that little bit of, if you're able to see this, you're too close. It's If you're able to see this, I'm already punching you. I just love this. It's just that little bit of braggadocio. That's awesome. There are mighty fists. Oh. Pummel an opponent. I'm guessing the one in the background is a long range version. In between. Oh, ooh, 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 ooh. so that answers my question about the cockpit. Also, this right here is sheer like mech porn to me. They even have the branding on the actual torso section. There's the joints. Oh, it's multi-jointed to spin up here as well. Oh, you got the ball joints on the head, so it's a smooth rotation. You got the actual command post. It's pretty durable, actually. There's a lot of insulation here, a lot of protection. Multi-fibrous joints in there. Ooh. You even see the cabling and the wires. And just what it looks like on the outside and the inside. Yeah, so it's bulky and rounded because that's extra space. That's just sheer armor added on top. Oh, I love this. Sorry, I just so much of this is actually functional material. But then just seeing all the extra fluff they put on, like literal, it's fluffy for protection. It just, oh, so much of this makes sense that I think someone would be like, yeah, I can do that. And they'll build their own. And I want to see that because it's so cool. Really, the hard part of this construction is actually finding metals that will be able to get up to this size and not collapse under their own weight after just being able to move and withstand the heat. That's really the hard part. It's just finding metals that can hold up to the designs you want. There is armor. Truly, the Atlas lives up to its principal design. Oh, God, it's beautiful. Salt. As previously stated, there are so Ooh, many Fiesta. variants and versions of the Atlas that it's fairly Donna Cannon. To figure out the base models as each is often as unique as the pilot bullet holes that only scratch it. the armor and what the and hell the is that or okay that's a thing so there's buying it right here and there's the signature and the guys with the armor yeah yeah makes sense and then there's that looks like a thing out of nightmare but it's a pet I didn't realize there were alien species in Battletech. Huh. Because I thought it was one of those weird futures where everything's kind of human. You just kind of roll with it. Guess not. Even if it's a... I'm just going to ignore that. It's probably less life-scarring that way. Or where it was discovered. There are discovered? variants as command mechs. There are variants... Hey, a chicken walker. Like ...successor houses like the Curita... <laughs> this current one's 7K. cooler. There's even a clan tech patchwork retrofit popular among certain mercenary units. In particular, the AS7D, parentheses C. Okay, that's which cool. Puts clan tech ballistic and missile weapons alongside intersphere energy weapons. Missiles and energy? This doesn't Ooh. even begin to get into the unique they one painted on bones. by warlords, mercenary lords, and Solaris pilots. Okay, Further, that looks cool. The Atlas has spawned another mech, which was a subversion or enhanced version subversion? of the original, the Atlas II, which was technically an exclusive variant to the Star League Defense Forces what? Royal Regiment. See, those are words I don't really understand. I do understand. I want to understand. I don't understand. I'm knowing that I don't understand them. During the 3052 Battle of Tugiad. I need to find the lore on this. Which I'm going to have to lore binge this next? today. 
What part of this universe shall I dive into? Is that it? No! Oh. oh, they have generic starfighters with really fucking huge wings. Those are not functional. I mean, like, all the mechs is sure, but the starfighter aspects, like, they're, they're so big, you don't need wings like that. Especially when you hit any... Is that a freaking axe? That was a freaking axe! It just had an axe! Double bladed axe, even. What was it doing that it needed an axe? Oh, here's a much smaller pilot. Is that a freaking samurai unit? Oh god, how much variation is there? Oh, oh, this is... I'm sorry, is that an actual to god katana in a white mech with a Gundam style helmet? I just love this! This is so cool! And there's a... A shark jetpack? And a Jaeger? I mean, this image is not actually what inspired Pacific Rim. I don't know what is. But that, that is a mech that looks like it's a shark with a giant horn. And giant ass rocket propulsion? It looks like that. I just... I, what? Is that a grizzly bear on like some kind of fan blades? What? I, I, I need context. I need context. What the hell is going on in this? This is so in the weird. World and setting of Battletech. There are many yeah, glorious, shooting a robot. truly mighty machines. And there's that robot in someone's hand. And then, well, there's the urban mech. What? But, well, it's what you wanted, so I guess we're really? going with that. Well, got to be honest, the urban mech is probably one of the most beloved mechs for two reasons. We're really? Going to. Because it makes it sound Firstly, like it's shit. It's a unique mech with a very narrowly defined purpose. It's a fantastically designed, dedicated combat platform for militia or planetary defense forces. It's also a rather good buy at 1.4 million C bills for a 30-ton mech. Okay, does anyone else think that all of this is him being as nice as he can and trying very hard to keep that way? Because it, it sounds like there's a giant butt coming up. Also, this is at human scale, because you can see how big the ladders are. So this is probably two stories tall at most. Go time! I can't read that. It says, what for a uh, can ticket? Wait, is this a police robot? Yeah, he said militia. Oh. Something good? I what I don't What? This is so weird. It's literally just giant oversized legs, a rotating cockpit, and guns that go up and down, which while completely functional, it uh, the other mechs are so huge as to be dominating. This one is it's like they're like, "Okay, we got a baby mech." Yay! It's cool, but it just, it, it looks like they took an Apollo lander and decided to put legs and guns on it. Making it an attractive, affordable choice for people who are building an army on a budget. Yeah. An army that doesn't mind being very, very, very slow. Wait, slow? Secondly, well, there's the memes. What? Oh, God, the memes. R2-D2. Okay, let's two. just roll through <laughs> Why these. does it have a cigar? Look, there's memes. What did I have a top hat? Oscar memes, the Grouch, yeah. More memes. More memes. Memes, <laughs> memes, 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 If you look for Battletech, I love this. or even do an image search on Battletech, there's going to be a lot of urban mech-centered content. You see, the <laughs> urban mech is like a pug. Derpy, small, and full of character. But hell, I suppose... I have to give it the full tech stocks battle tech treatment, so buckle up. Oh my god, they threw it at a freaking Imperial Walker from 40k. <laughs> oh, I just, I just. <laughs> to be fair, if you could bring down a knight or a freaking titan with a guy with a bayonet, sure, why not? <laughs> Please don't wait, there's the next panel of it just going splat. Here we go. <laughs> In 2675, Orcus Industries cool. designed and developed the Urban Mech to be a cheap, easily produced wow, it mech looks for urban combat. Even defense. dumber there. The marketing goal was to have this mech sold to the Starlink Defense Force 
for the purpose of urban defense. It should be noted that this was Orgus Industries' first and only battle mech design. Oh. As a relative outsider to the manufacturer of battle mechs, Orcus decided to do things their way and build something pretty damn unique in the process. But? From 2675 until the destruction of I have no idea what this circle means. Is it the Windows so Start logo? Was Orgus's Marcus facility, after which manufacture was picked up and or stolen by the industrial powerhouse Hellas Pond Industrials like and the Capellan Windows Start logo. If it starts Which was spinning, still mass so help me. Manufacturing the little bastard until 3081. It should be noted that the urban mag for all of its strangeness was. I hate, I hate what I'm about to say, but I kind of need to say it. Look, everyone, it's Ant Man. I feel bad for having made that joke. Not bad enough that I didn't make it, but just enough that I realize I should feel shame for having said that. Was fondly received by militia. Oh wow, and that mustache! It's like how did guys did have some good? SLBF, every successor state and many pirate and mercenary orders. God, let's go on to see what makes an urban mech. An urban mech. It looks like a trash can. The lights. urban mech is designed around the Republic R chassis, which is unique to you guessed it. The Urban Mech. In fact, everything Orgus ever made was pretty much linked to the Urban Mech program. At 30 tons and carrying 6 tons of armor, which is respectable considering that all armor is concentrated in a very small, squat, ugly, stupid trash can. I mean, <laughs> professional. <laughs> he slipped mech up! Yes. Caught in a trash can. Size, the Urban Mech is also jump capable. It has a It can points. jump? And the base model of the UM R60. Carries an AC-10 auto cannon and a small laser. Small laser. The only downside to this little bastard hey, is up. that it is slow. What? How slow? Well, assault makes tend to tread forward at a modest 40 to 50 kph or so. I mean, not bad. It's the like a slow car. flat out does 32, which doesn't sound like a whole lot. That's because it isn't. However, the urban I'm sorry, I need to look something up quickly, because if that's what it sounds like, I... that That is not kosher. Okay, just gonna pull a new window. 32. Oh, I should probably click on it. 32. KPH. 2. PH, I can definitely do stuff. 90 miles an hour. Okay, why is that now there? How do I get rid of that? Okay, that's how I get rid of that. Okay, so its max speed isn't even 20 miles an hour. For clarification, a guy on a bicycle could outrace this thing. You can hit 30 miles an hour on a bike. Not uphill, but... I, I mean, sure, you'd have to outrun a laser. On the other hand... That is really slow. A modern tank moves faster. It can hit at least 40 or 50 miles an hour. Probably faster if you, you know, have open ground. Some tanks can really book it if they want now. But I just... Mm. You think it moved faster because it's less weight to move. I, I'm sorry, I'm still blown away that in-universe they made something explicitly that just plodding. I thought some of the big ones would move that slow because there's just so much bulk. But then he got this, he's like, hi guys! Just, 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 just do the thing. I, I just, um, that, ah, sure. It's literally a bowling pin. Like, not even a trash can. It's a bowling pin. A bowling... Purpose, it barely moves. Until it's knocked over. In a city, the urban mech doesn't need to go fast. It just needs to creep and hop along, get in position. When the and people the walking have a better chance of moving further than you. And in that role is where it excels. Also to note is that the urban mech has very few interesting design quirks that keeps it engaged with and win against much tougher opponents what? in that setting. Firstly, the urban mech is a low-profile mech, meaning that it's a lot yeah. harder to hit. 
Second, true. It has an extended torso twist arc, enabling it to Wait, fight while facing all of them can't do that. Pieces and trundling along. That's kind Being of in production for a very long time leads the urban mech to having loads of variants. Oh. Because when an opponent automatically assumes an urban mech is an unimaginative weapon system, somebody will modify it to surprise the hell out of them. Yeah. Here are a few notable. How many of them examples. are just trash cans and actual trash cans with explosives? They're just walking through and it blows up on you. With an AC-10 with an AC-20. Because what's funnier than a trash can that cores an assault mech in a surprise attack? What? UMR-63 upgrades the aging urban mech with Lost Tech, giving it an LBX auto cannon 10 and a small laser. That is that good? The Draconis Combine interestingly upgraded the urban mech with the UMR-68. That's a lot of missiles. Which replaced all weapons with an MRM-30, which surprised the living hell out of Clan Ghost Bear. UMR-70 incorporated... I can see why people call it the pug. It's small, it's ugly, it's stupid, and then apparently the pug has a knife. And nobody in the Federated Sun stopped them. Again. The UMA-4... Hey, nipple laser's back on an Atlas. ...with an Aero-4 and an ER medium laser. It also squeezes the pilot into a modified smaller trash can cockpit Smaller? Other, and can barely carry 10 rounds of ammunition. But hey, it's now walking artillery for city fighting, because why not? In summation, the urban mech is an often overlooked, severely meme-worthy mech of note because it is actually very effective in a very small niche. And cheap. It loves to Ish. surprise bad dudes many times its size, and it is insanely affordable. How many people just made an army of these guys? Are you happy now? Gah? Let us guardian make the credits happen. Uh, kill me. <laughs> I love it. I love the salt. No. Okay, that just happened. We got Pimp Cane Trash Can. No, 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 no. What? Okay, no, no. I need to read this. Special thanks to Sahara.net, the greatest wiki of them all, and shitloads of technical documents that I hoard. This is in no way endorsed by the people who came up with this stuff. They'd whip me with a belt if they found out. Don't sue Tex. Tex has no money. This is a work of opinion from an asshole. You've been warned. Everything belongs to their respective authors, writers, artists, and so Tex is just a voice that likes whiskey. Guys who stabs clouds? Okay, so this is probably more just me being a sadistic asshole. But I think out of all those videos, I love the Urban Mech one the most. Because while the other ones were cool and awesome and had nipple lasers, which I'm still stuck on. Okay, that was not the right way to phrase that. Um, let's move on. I hope no one notices. The Urban Mech, just like, it's it's a meme. I love memes. And then we got the freaking meme robot that's just so bad. But then it has missile weapons and laser weapons and <laughs> I'm a pug with a nuclear launcher. Die, bitch. I just, what? I don't get <laughs> Oh, God. I'm going to have to start collecting this game now and start with Urban Mechs because they're memes and I want memes. Just a bunch of little pug model mechs with guns that can tore. Out some mechs, asshole. They don't even have assholes because they're mechs. They don't actually need to poop. But they're going to when I'm done with them. I just love this. God. As far as the voice goes, as far as text goes, I love how much he absolutely hated doing this. The sheer, I'm doing it because you asked. Kill me now. That aspect was just brilliant. I love that. I can see why this became a really beloved series and why so many people wanted me to watch this because this is brilliant, man. It's not just the specifics, which is cool. It's not just the lore, which I need to know more about. If anyone knows where I can find more, I actually really appreciate it. Because I know people told me before, and I lost it. Yeah, that, that's probably not something I should admit, but I, I, I lost a lot of the recommendations. Yeah, because I am very forgetful, and my computer crashed, and all my tabs went away, and I had to refine them, and I forgot a lot of them. Yeah. But just, I want to see more. I do more now, but honestly, I need to actually go adult because apparently <laughs> being an adult <laughs> means you have to continue adulting. <laughs> it's a very vicious cycle. Don't ever grow up, unless you do, in which case, my condolences. Oh, God. This is, I'm looking forward to doing more of these. So for everyone else who recommended this to me for, honestly, quite a long time, since I started looking at TTS to start with, I think back then even, thank you. This is great. 
I'm glad I finally got to it and I hadn't forgotten, even though I kind of did until now. But I'm going to completely pretend I remembered it. it was definitely on the list because I didn't lose the list and I moved, which definitely didn't happen. Yeah. It's all the same. You guys know the deal. There's a link below to the original videos. Hit them up. And when you're done, don't forget to leave a like, comment, subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one because there's going to be a next one. This is so freaking cool, man. I have no idea what's next. I don't even spoil myself by looking for it. I just want to see more. So we're going to do that. I'll see you guys then. Adios.